some cowboys. All right, so we, yes. Now, real quick, last week of October is always uh, Red Ribbon Week. So I don't do a lot of extra credit, but I do do this once a year. So it says it on the board here, but you have an opportunity to get some extra credit. Uh, Red Ribbon Week is about living a drug-free, not free drugs, but drug-free lifestyle, okay, which is, in my humble opinion, very good to promote. Nope, I don't even want to answer questions. I don't, I don't want any jokes. Just just listen. Just hold on. So, uh, first things first, it's a poster uh, little project. We are not having class time to do this, okay? Unless you finish your assignments and you got some extra time, go for it, okay? Uh, but you want to make a poster that supports a drug-free lifestyle, do this Friday, no later than this Friday. It must be on a large poster. Uh, do, I might have some big white pieces of paper you could use. It must be, this is important, colorful, creative, unique with pictures and drawings, okay? So make it look like you care more than like a stick figure, black and white. I will not accept the black and white stick figure, and I feel like someone's gonna do it because I keep saying don't do that. So try me, because I'm the one giving the grade. Don't do that, okay? Now, this is a big must, okay? The only reason, only way I can give extra credit is if it has any relevance to my subject matter. So the mathematical subject matter will be that you will do a tiny bit of research to find a mathematical statistic that confirms the harmfulness of illicit drug use, uh, especially in the youth, that'd be good. But you can do death statistics, age range, who gets affected most by what, uh, what does drug use lead to, blah, blah, blah. You get creative, and here's the deal. Googling is totally fine, but when you must include the website you found the statistic on, do not put Google. Google is not the site that has the information, it's the way to get to the site that has the information. So again, you must have a statistic that you write on there, make it creative, and it must include the actual website you got the information from. You can go to redribbon.org for just more information about Red Ribbon Week. And, you know, if you want to make it like festive and spooky and Halloween-y, that's fine, whatever, or don't. Now, that's it. Uh, it is optional, it is not an assignment, but it can give you extra credit. Now, serious oh, question? Oh yeah, good question. So, I might add, I think I'm gonna add some points to your test average, which, which boosts your grade more than just like a missing assignment, okay? I haven't decided, but it will definitely help you grade. So, question. Right, so we're talking about illicit things. No prescription, bad for you stuff, not good for you stuff. Well, and, and even, okay, even, okay, sorry. Abusing prescribed is actually, yeah, that's a, that's a big deal too, so go for it. Yeah, as long as it's obviously not, I took my cold medicine to make my head feel better, and that's bad, okay, no, okay. So again, illicit or overuse, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, celebrate or participate? We'll have to see on Monday. Because there might be a trick or there might be a treat or both. No, but like outside of school. Oh, okay. Um, okay, I'll handle Kenny, whatever. I got the smoke machines and like the black lights and everything. And I like, my brother hides behind the bushes. We scare the kids. I got the loudspeaker, you know. No. I get to. <laughs> Wait, who, what? <laughs> Wait, let's just not go back to that. All right, warm up. So, oh, look at that. Look at that guy. All right, now, are y'all able to graph x squared in your yellow calculator. Maybe. You should be able to, in case you don't have a calculator and need to get one, you should do that. If you're on your phone or doing something else, make sure you're looking up here, unless you're taking the test. Okay, so y'all know how to do this, where you, uh, yes you do, you go to, we just did this with uh, absolute values. New document, graph, x, and then squared is next to four, boom. Okay, now before you sketch it, well, you can do a rough sketch on yours, that's fine, because you don't have the grid. But how would I get a table? What do I press to get a table here? Control T, gives me a table. Now, notice, I want to start at negative two. My table starts here at positive one. The one thing that's different about your calculator and mine is that your X 
column is like super narrow and a lot of people miss it right where the x is like this tiny little row column sorry but uh you got to go up to get to that negative two now i have these points that i need okay so negative two four negative one one zero zero one one four two four so oh, i remember when i used to be able to draw Okay, here we go. So four one zero one four. So you should be able to get your your table, and then could you plot those points on a grid? Hey, right. So negative two four, negative one one, no zero zero, one one two four. So if you can plot all those points and then do your best, get real quick. Real quick, both of y'all. Now mine looks horrible. Let's try that again. Wait, only I can hate on it. It's probably with a broken thumb too. No, two people are up. How come it gets worse every time? Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, that is my best parabola. Okay. So hopefully you, you sketched a nice parabola that's not as sketchy as mine. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pass up these notes. So you took that test on Friday. I'll get that graded in my hand one of these days, one of these. Okay. So let's start these notes. Is everyone looking up here? This is new. It's old and new at the same time. Okay, meaning you should have done this in algebra one, but it's also Here we go. Now unit three. Listen, listen, listen. Unit three, we did absolute value. So let me just make a little note at the top here. Hey. Unit three was what shape? It was that the vertical lines. Real quick, I'm doing notes. Y'all remember it looks like this? What's that called? We spent a whole unit on it. Absolute value. Does that sound somewhat familiar? Yeah. Okay. Everyone's looking up here? Hey. Hey. So, unit three looked like that. Now, this is unit four. Quadratic looks like this. Now, that's not too different, but it's a little different. Okay? It's not pointy, but it does do the same. It goes. They both go up forever. They have a vertex at the bottom. Okay? This is called a... Parabola. Maybe. All right, parabola. Now, let's look at these steps. Ready on the left-hand side? This is very, very similar to the last unit. The only thing different is that last unit, you had these, like, vertical lines right here, right? But instead of vertical lines, now you have parentheses and a squared. Okay? That. Okay, now, do y'all remember A out front can do a couple things. It can reflect it across the x-axis. There we go. Okay, A can flip it across the x-axis. It can vertically stretch it or vertically compress it. 
Y'all remember doing that? Vertical stretch and compress. And then we know insiders what? This is a lie. Go ahead and write that down as a little note to yourselves. Even for quadratic, insiders lie. So absolute value, insiders lie. Now, H and K, just remember, H is a lie in the, in the equation. Uh, that's your vertex. And then what about minimum, maximum? So if you have a U shape, at the bottom of the U is a minimum. If you have like a hill, the top is a maximum. Okay. And you might remember axis, X is, it's always X equals, and it's the H value. H is right there. Okay. And then y'all know how to find x-intercepts and y-intercepts. If you graph it, and you can press menu 5-1. Y'all remember that? Or if, you, if you're given a picture, you can just see it on the picture, okay? So x-intercepts and y-intercepts, if you graph it, you do menu 5-1 to trace it. And then we've done domain and range before, so we're going to do some examples of this together right here, right now. And then I'll let you do some practice, okay? So everybody look at example one. Ready? Ready? Over here. I'm going to screech. Screech! Bless you. Now, there we go. First things first. This negative... Does what to the graph? Reflect, right? It, it was positive opening upwards. Now it's negative opening downwards. So it's a what? Uh, we'll get there. But first we reflect across what axis? Is that horizontal line? Across the x axis. X axis. <laughs> Okay, now what about this one half? It's less than one, so it's a vertical what? Stretch is greater than one, but one half is less, so it's a vertical compression. So it'll look wider, vertical compression. Of one half. It's a weird end, compression. Now remember, insiders lie. So this minus five, which is a lie, is going which way? It's horizontal and it's it's not a minus five, it's, it's really a plus five, so yeah, it's right five, shifted right five. And then what about this minus three? This K value is not a lie, so what's that? So that one's vertical, and it doesn't lie, so minus is down, down three. Cool. So again, the negative reflects across the x-axis. The one-half is a vertical compression. The minus five liar is a right five, and then minus three is a down three. So you got it? Yes. Uh, down three, the down is the negative part. Okay, vertex point. So again, remember, H is a lie, K is not a lie. What is my vertex? What is it? Okay, 5, negative 3 is good because the insider lied right there. Now think about it. Look, look at my arms. This is a normal parent function. We said it was flipped, so it's going down. So you tell me, is there a max or a min? If it looks like a hill now, there's a max at the top. Now, you don't have to imagine it in your mind. You could just graph it in your calculator and take a look at it, right? So if you're ever like, eh? okay, try that. Axis is always X is. It's always X equals. 
and it always equals the x value of the vertex, the h value. What is that? Five. Okay. So again, whatever the vertex x, that's what is going to be the axis of symmetry. Okay. Now we've reached the point where we can no longer just figure it out without seeing it. Okay. X intercepts and Y intercepts, you're going to have to graph this thing. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay. Oh my gosh. Killing me. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do a new document. Don't save. Number two. I'm going to type this in. Negative control divide. 1 over 2, y, negative, control divide, 1 over 2, oops, parentheses, x minus 5. Oh, by the way, everybody, there's a big typo here. Look at this. This is supposed to be squared. Screen. Okay, right here is supposed to be a squared, a little two here. So go ahead and write a little squared right there. After the parentheses. Yes. Because for some reason is not cooperating it makes you want to screech screech there we go does everyone see that squared right there it only took me like nine years to get there all right here we go oh my gosh every time i move it okay so i can't do that because it'll mess it up, so I have to drag this over and then use the bars at the bottom. And now can I zoom out? Thank you so much. Here we go. Okay, after all that, don't forget it's squared. And then minus three. Oh, by the way, this is a minus five. Sorry. Okay, so I typed that in, and it took five years, and here we go. We hit enter, and it looks like this. Now, does everyone see? It's at the bottom right, and you got a little hill. You may not be able to see a lot of it, but you can see enough of it. Okay. How do I get x-intercepts? What do I always press to start tracing it? So we wrote it over off to the side. We wrote it off to the side down here. Right here, what do we say? Yeah, menu 5 1. Does everyone see that right there? We wrote it down? Okay. Now. Before we press menu 5-1, look at this graph. Where does this graph cross the x-axis? It does not cross the x-axis. Sometimes there's two, sometimes there's one, but in this case, there's none. So go and write that for x-intercepts, none. It doesn't even touch it. Even if you do menu 5-1, you'll never get a point where it crosses the x-axis, right? Because it's below it. Now. What about the y-intercept, okay? Could this keep going down to the left and touch it? I think so. So let's press menu 5-1. Menu 5-1. It pops up there at the bottom right, right? Zero, negative 15.5. So, and by the way, if I go left and right, it'll show me that's what it is. Y-intercept. So let's write this down. Zero, negative 15.5. Now, domain 
and range. So if you remember, the parabola, the quadratic, goes kind of like the absolute value. It goes forever to the left, forever to the right. Okay. So if it keeps going to the left forever and it keeps going to the right forever, what should I write for the domain? Okay. So I, I, I could do negative infinity to positive infinity, but what's the short cut? Yeah, if it goes forever both ways, the all real numbers. Right, it's the weird way. Now, or you could do it negative infinity, less than x, less than infinity. You could do parentheses, negative infinity, comma infinity. Either way, those are all different ways of writing the same thing. Okay? It goes for Or just R. Okay. I never did, but I all real numbers is correct. It's just a lot a lot of abbreviation there. What about the range? Now let me uh I'm gonna go up to the vertex just so I can see it. So I need a, a range of values. Now is which direction is range? Okay, if you're looking at a phone, are you looking over here? Look, look, look over here, everybody. So you said up and down, but hold on. Range is not up to down, right? It's bottom to top, okay? Not top to bottom, bottom to top, okay? Always start with the least to the greatest. So the least will be down to up, bottom to top. So you tell me, how far down is this thing going? Does it stop there? No. No. Does it stop there? It goes on forever. Down, 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 down. So negative infinity, okay? Negative infinity less than what variable do we use for range? X was range, so Y. And we don't under underline the uh, less than sign because it's negative infinity. Now, how far up does it go? What's the y value of this vertex up here? Negative 3. So you're going to put less than or equal to negative 3. Well, this one's not r. Another way, another way you could do it is with the uh, interval notation, which will be like this. Negative infinity with parentheses, comma, negative 3 with a bracket. There's interval or set notation. Okay, here we go. Now we want to graph this below. So listen, listen. Now to get points for this graph, what do I press to get a table? Control T. Now, if I'm graphing this on here, do you see how 1, negative 11 is like off the grid? It's like way down here. Yeah. It would be. So let's actually pick points on the grid. So 2, negative 7.5. 3, negative 5. 4, negative 3.5. 5, negative 3. Six negative three point five, seven negative five, eight negative seven point five. Once you have all those points plotted, you could connect it and make a nice looking quadratic parabola. Mine looks sketch, but it's great. So everyone's graphing number one, and then you flip it over. We're gonna do number two. It looks quite mid.
Yeah, real quick. I guess you're gonna miss out on all the important stuff. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, ready? Example two, flip it over. Why not? All right, so let's do this. First things first, what does this two do to this graph? Vertical something, what is it? Two is bigger than one, so it's a vertical stretch. Okay, now this insider is a lie, so this plus four goes which way? Left four. Can we draw? And then the minus 10 goes which way? Down 10, okay. What's the vertex point? What's the opposite of the H and the K? What do I put? What do I put? It's HK, H is a lie on the inside. What do you think? If this is a lie, what do I put? What do you think? Yeah, what's the opposite of this? Okay, comma what? What's the K value? Negative 10. Okay, that's how you get the vertex. It's in there. You just remember that the H is on the inside and it's a lie. Is that a min or a max? Now, if it never flips over, it looks like a U shape. Is there a min or a max on a U shape? Min. Okay. X is of symmetry. X is X equals. What's the X value of the vertex? And then we need to graph this so we can get the X intercepts and the y intercepts so let's go ahead and do that so new document don't save graph two parentheses x plus four parentheses squared minus sign 10 now does everyone see if you look at that graph the x intercept is not exactly on the grid okay it's going to be a decimal so let's go ahead and press menu 5-1. First of all, it gives us the y-intercept. You see that right here, y-intercept? So it's 0, comma 22. We can write that one down for sure. But we need to do something to find these x-intercepts. So let's go to the left. Boom. Okay. Now, when you do this, you might run into this situation. What is my x-intercept here? What does it say? Negative 1.76 comma, you see that? What does that mean? 2e negative 12. Forever. No solution. None. 12. Negative 12. So what it means is, look right here. Zero with twelve zeros and then a two. So zero point sorry, I should have said zero point zero 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 two. No, I'm just saying that that one number, if it's that small, it's basically zero. So I'm telling you, whenever you see this weird looking thing right here, you have to mentally think, oh that means zero. Okay, I don't know why the calculator does it. Probably has to do with pixels and rounding and weird stuff. Okay. Let's go ahead and write this answer down. It's really negative 1.76 comma what? Zero, like we just said. Write it above it. Negative 1.76 comma zero. And then let's go to the other root. Root is a zero, is an x-intercept, is a solution. Now this one is negative 6.24 comma what does this thing mean again? Zero. zero. 
negative 6.24 comma 0. Okay. Now, I'll tell you this. Uh, the domain is always going to be for a quadratic. It always goes forever to the left and forever to the right. It's always all real numbers for the domain. Everyone hear me say that? So the domain, I mean, these quadratics, they never stop going left or right. Okay. Okay, real quick. But the range matters. So let's look at our graph. Okay. How far down does this graph go? What do y'all think? How far down does that graph go? To what? No. What's the y value of that bottom point of this graph? No. No. What? Okay, negative 10 is the bottom of my graph. Do y'all see that? It's at the, literally, it cannot go further down than that. Okay. All right. Everyone looking up here? So the bottom is negative 4. So I'm going to put negative 4, less than or equal to, what variable is there for range? What variable do we use? Y. And then, as you can see, this goes up forever. Up and up and up and up and up and up and up. So what do I put next? Less than positive infinity. Another way to write it is like this. Either way is good. But now we need to graph it on the table. Or sorry, on the grid. So what do I press to get a table from this graph? Control T. Okay, control T. Now, you see how 140 is not going to fit on this graph? Uh, I need to go up till I get some reasonable points here. So let's plot these points. Negative 6, negative 2. Negative 5, negative 8. Negative 4, negative 10, negative 3, negative 8, negative 2, negative 2. And then you can connect that with a parabola. Do your best sketch. So, are you able to get all this information from an equation? This time. Look at example three. Yes. Wait, what the heck? Gotta take a pass. Some of us don't know how to take a pass. Very sus. We don't have an equation. All right, so if we have no equation, we're going to get one. So above it, go ahead and write y equals a x minus h squared plus k. Okay, that's our formula. Now, just like when we did absolute value, how do I figure out a? What do I do with these two points to figure out a? Yeah, how do I figure out A in the equation? What do I do with the vertex and the point next to it? They're already graphed. Everybody, look. Look. How do I figure out the A value between these two points? What do I need to do? We did this last week with a absolute value function. Okay, so remember, A tells you the vertical stretch or compression. 
So it tells you how much it. Okay, but how much? How, what do I do to figure out that number between these points? What is A? Do y'all know? Just by looking at this? Not negative because it's still going up. Why is it 2? Because you counted the rise over run. Okay, that's what we did last time for absolute value. Rise, rise over run. Now it's really rise over 1, I should say. Six and where? Between this point and this point, it rises how much? How much does it rise? You're not. So how much does it rise? Two over one. Okay, so two over one is the same thing as just two. So we have our a value. So y equals two. Okay. You've got to count the rise over 1 to get the A value. Cool. Uh, and then we're going to put parentheses X. Now, what is the vertex? Let's write this vertex point. Who can tell me the coordinates of this point right here? Uh, negative 2. X before uh, Y. Yeah, 1 over negative 2. 1 negative comma, comma negative 2. Negative two. No okay, so write that down. 1 comma negative 2. And then for the equation, just remember that Okay. So remember, insiders lie. So what am I going to put next to that x? Minus, yeah, minus 1 squared. And then what's k? Yeah, what's the k value here? Okay, so we already did the opposite of H right here. What's my K value? Negative 2 or we're going to put minus 2 here. For, for this unit, quadratic, yes. Good question. Now, for the transformations, the 2 is a vertical what? Bigger than 1 is a vertical stretch by 2. And then minus 1 shifts left or right. It's an insider, so insiders lie. So it's which way? Right 1. And then the minus 2 afterwards goes up or down? Down 2. Okay, is that a min or a max down here? Minimum. It's at the bottom of a U. Axis of symmetry is x equals the x value of the vertex, which is 1. Who can tell me the x-intercepts real quick, just by looking at it? No. So what's this vertex? Sorry, what is this uh, x-intercept right here? 0, 0, and what? 2, 0. Okay. X before Y. 0, 0, and 2, 0. Hey, what are you doing? And then the Y intercept, where does it cross this Y axis right here? Neither. Where, where does it cross the Y axis? 0, 0. The domain is always what? No. Nope. What? The domain is always what? Nope. Hey, the all real numbers, because it goes forever to the left and forever to the right. What about the range? How far down does this go? Negative 2 up to infinity. Okay, so the, the big important part about a graph is you have to count the rise over run to get the A. Everything else is pretty standard. Okay. Sure you can. Can you count rise over run? Yes. Well, you'll have to try on these three. I believe in you.
and I can sit there for five minutes questioning the intelligence. Do you ever do this? All right, so you have sometime today, then you have tomorrow. On this 4.1. Two. Already? Yeah. All right, let's get started on that assignment.